Good afternoon and welcome to the Bible study here at St. Mark's Lutheran. We invite you to join with us and to take care. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Lord God, as we pause to reflect upon your word, let us hear not only the words, but to see and to respond to the challenge which is before us. We pray this as we study in your name. Amen. As we are looking at that, I was looking at the parables both in front and behind here in Luke, and they kind of uh, make you wonder why all of, why Luke caught all of them, and yet that was part of the life that Jesus was walking, mm -hmm. and so he just told those stories in a sense and Luke recorded them and this is an interesting one and especially so because one of the things that um, I read was that Martin Luther had been asked once uh, what about worship and he said a good example is the tenth leper Okay because he was able to return and to worship, to give gratitude, thanks, whatever you want to say, where the other nine did not. But then there's some other interesting flips to that as to, but he told them to go and, you know, have the priest declare them clean, right. which is what they did. Yeah, just what they did. So how can they be wrong? And yet... But it was like, they did it, but they didn't finish. The they job. didn't finish. There was only one that returned, and it's that. So let's um, read that today. Uh, do you have your your um, reading it's of the it? Now have you, yeah. Go ahead. I'll have you read that. Okay. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. There's all kinds of little goodies in that particular text that like why did he have to point out that the one that returned was a samaritan you know have you thought about that oh, he had, he had two strikes that. against him he had two strikes against yeah. him one he was samaritan and two he was a leper yeah, yeah. he was he was like the worst of the worst <laughs> and yet jesus points him out and says are you the only one that can come back and give god thanks um, now, we can say, well, maybe the others did. We don't know because this is, he was healed, the Samaritan, as he was in his route to the priest. But when he saw that he was healed, he turned around and went back. So the others, we kind of think, well, they didn't give thanks. We don't know that because this text doesn't tell us that. And there's no other story to right. to be able to see into it but um why do you think jesus in all of these parables is attempting to build back relationships to god i think the relationships that he that he's that he's trying to build is is a more personal one-to-one -one personal, a, a real relationship like you're sitting here and I'm sitting here and we're sitting here speaking to each other, relating to each other as, as real, as very real. 
as opposed to at that time and, and through time and certainly even now in our time, uh, there are uh, many times and many folks tend to relate to God in a more uh, 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 less personal, you know, in a more formal kind of a way, in a very uh, regulated kind of a way. This is what, you, you know, back then, you know, you had to slaughter three lambs, you had to come to this place, you had to, you know, there were certain things you had to do, and this is how you related to God, was in these steps, whether it was Leviticus or whatever. That was the religion, and that's how you related to God. Whereas now Jesus is putting this in a very, it's, it's, I'm right here sitting next to you. You don't have to, you know, like his, save the lambs and save the sheep. Uh, you know, if you want to praise God, you can simply tell me thank you, because I'm sitting right here with you. So I think that's, in, the, in many of these uh, relationships that he's building, he's showing that it's, it's a very personal relationship. Okay, and we'll, and the word you didn't use in that is see. And we, as we get into this a little more, we'll talk about the word of seeing and how that makes a difference within this relationship, okay? okay. You mentioned Leviticus as we were talking earlier. Do you have that in front of you? No. No, I didn't copy that. Okay. And I did bring it. Do you have it? I don't have it marked, but I can get to it. Which, what, what was the story in Leviticus that you were? Leviticus 14. Okay. Is, that whole chapter is regulations for any diseased person at ah. the time of their ceremonial cleansing. Yeah. But in 13, it says, it begins there. Thou shalt be a ritual for the lepers mm -hmm. in a time of cleaning. So there was a ritual. There was yeah. something that had to be done as a ritual. It was part of what was expected of them as He shall be brought to lepers. a priest. In the next sentence is, he shall be brought to a priest. Right. Yeah, which, which the priest had two. Declare. Uh, which is why Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Or, you know, oh, it's just a rash. It'll be okay, you know, tomorrow or whatever. The priest has to verify. Yeah. That's part of the process. But in this whole process, what do you see that the priest's function is? Just a verification, I guess. It's almost like a medicine man thing, you know. Plus, he does what? That's right. He's like the medicine man. What else does he do? I didn't read the rest no, of what the process but is. But he's what? A preacher? A teacher? Mm -hmm. uh, arbitrator? You know, they come to him for... Intermediary. Intermediary. Yeah. To, so, at that point, the rabbis or the priests had many hats that they were wearing. Right. Um, we don't think of that today. We think of only the religious kind of hat that they wear. Why would that be important for Jesus to send them to the rabbis or the priest? Well, you... he didn't discount the laws that they had. Right, that was, that's a big that was. The Remember, Jesus thing. was a Jew. He was a Jew. He was a Jew. This was the Jewish custom. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to be well, they have to be checked out at the priest. Yeah, and I would think that there's other people who know these ten men in this little village or whatever. So if, if after Jesus heals them, uh, to further heal them in a social setting, to, you know, to heal them among the, the other people around them, go to the priest and the priest will will give their blessing that this person is no longer a leper so now he's lifted that that whole um, you know that whole weight of being a leper in that yeah. society okay now what was on Jesus mind however at this point I would think that Jesus I would think that these Priests probably, again, would have known of this person, the local priest, 
and they would have been curious. This man was known as a leper. Ten men in one day all walked up to us as, and wanting to be, and yes, they don't have lepers. I think that the priest, being a smart person, would have asked, how, how, did, how did that happen? You know? And so, uh, I think that, uh, hello? Okay, I'll stop. Go. You're there? Okay, I'm in a class. Bye. Oh, good. You know, got okay. okay, yeah, so um, I'm thinking what was Jesus thinking at that point was that, well, maybe, was that uh, you know, by sending these ten men to the priest all at once, they would be curious as to how did you become clean all of a sudden. And, of course, that would lead to Christ, to Jesus. But Jesus, I'm, I'm thinking also Jesus, what was, where was he headed? Jerusalem. Jerusalem and ultimately the, the cross. cross. So on one hand Jesus in the midst of all this does what? He's stopping his travels and is willing to take and, and heal these individuals. And sometimes we forget that we say, well, he's busy, he's got other things. And yet, time after time, he stops oh, yeah. his schedule, his activity, whatever you want to call it, and deals with people's needs. And even though he knows nine of them will not come back, he still heals them. And what should that say for us in this day? With the co corona, and Cor God's never too COVID. busy. COVID. Yeah, he's yeah. never too busy. And he's paying attention to each one of us. Um, and, and then further to, to thank him, to be thankful, to worship and praise, praise him, be thankful. And yet, we just expected of him and that's yeah. the problem I have sometimes people expect that he's going to heal them that's not always the case and we no, need to keep that in mind um, is there anything unusual that happens in this um, encounter with the ten people. Well, the physical healing isn't the end of the story. There's one thing that jumps out to me here and and uh, there's recently and I've heard this before that people saying that you know where in the Bible does it specifically state that Jesus says that he's God. It's just one of these things and, and I know that uh, and, I, and I heard recently that there's some religious, I don't know if he's Islam, a Muslim or somebody else, uh, it was like a challenge to a Christian saying, show me where the New Testament Jesus ever openly says that he's God. And I just find it interesting. Now this is a new revised standard version. But it does say the Father and I are one. Oh yeah. And the, that is reiterated throughout yeah. his life. Yeah, and, and that's right. And you know, here's another point is that in my version it says he the, that tenth leper who came back prostrated himself at Jesus's feet and thanked him then Jesus responded where are the other ones where are they are you essentially are you the only one of them to return to praise God and he wasn't even a Jew well yeah what I'm saying is that this person came back to thank Jesus the man and Jesus asked him, are you the only one that came back to praise God? So, I mean, in my mind, here's just another point where Jesus knew who he was at this yes. point. And, and he knew who his father was. And uh, uh, so anyway, I just wanted to point, this is a, I think this is an yeah. interesting point. Yeah, there's all these yeah. different times. You it, know, it's a revelation of, again, of, of who Jesus was is and was but it really also helps us to remember the, the 
three functions of the Godhead. God the Father, the Creator, God the Son, the Savior, God the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier. And all three of those are so interwoven within Scripture that we sometimes, well, where does he actually say it? Well, we are one. Yeah. And I think it's that oneness that is confusing to us because how could God allow himself to be placed on a cross? God is God, so he can do a lot of things. You know, there was a documentary this morning, a World War II documentary, and there was a pilot who had lost his legs just before World War II. And when the war started, he was British, and uh, just as the war started, the Brits needed pilots. And so he was, he, okay, they let him in. And uh, now he was older than most of the pilots, extremely experienced. So when he went to his squadron, uh, uh, they actually made this, this gentleman uh, with no legs, his pilot, a, uh, uh, the leader of this, of this little squadron. and. Uh, and none of, none, of, none of them gave him any respect, really. I mean, not, they weren't rude to him, but they just didn't, you know, give him any respect. Well, this guy, uh, he had wooden legs, so one day he just walked out to the airfield, climbed into an airplane, all the pilots were standing around on Sunday afternoon looking around, and this guy went out and did things with that airplane that nobody had ever seen. Couldn't believe that he could do this. And when he came back down, they were, had a whole different view of who this person yeah. was. So it's, uh, to me, it's the same as God. God came down and was willing to feel what I feel when I'm pinched, to feel what I feel when somebody tells me how horrible I am, to feel what it feels like to have a sword stuck in your belly, to feel what it feels like. You know, we know as human beings what that feels like, but then there's some transcendent, transcendent God that we can that we think about and oh, you know, no, God came down to feel what we feel. So now we know through Jesus that He knows our pain. He intimately knows what it feels like to have a nail driven, to have a sword driven, to be scourged, to have, you know, that pain, that, and not just physical, but that emotional, that horrible pain. What does it feel like to lose someone you really love? The crying at Lazarus, you know. Uh, so, I mean, and, and so that's, you know, that's why. But we have to also remember that all of these examples, Jesus takes the ordinary and points out something that is spiritually important. Right. Right. You know, like in the healing, like in the seeds, the, you know, the bread, the wine, um, which is probably the best example that we have, that, you know, here's my body. As you eat and drink, it's my body and blood. That's ordinary stuff that we can touch, see, and feel, but it's all a part of God. And again, here, we begin to see that with this one leper. But I think also we need to be aware of all of those other parables, which help us to see all of these factors about God, about Jesus being, we call him the son because he was born. He was a real man. He, he was a real he, person. He was in flesh with us and therefore we have a different view. Um, and which leads us to then the one leper did not follow God's words. The nine did. God commended and said, your faith has saved you to the one to the other nine, they were cleansed. Does that mean they did not have faith? No. No, to me, I don't. No. For them to have the, uh, to, to in their minds, think it's a, to, to go before a priest and say that I'm healed, Fair. that would take a lot of moxie. You know, you'd have to be pretty sure of yourself to walk up before, because that's a... Well, that was, that was the rule. If they want sure. to be declared clean, they had to go to the priest. But their faith made them clean. It. If that's how they became clean, then for them to just turn around and start making a beeline to the priest, they must know that they're clean. Well, well they must know that they, yeah. they have. So that, my, that, my estimation that they have perfect faith. I mean, well, perfect. They have uh, very strong faith uh, in, in Jesus as, as God, as, in God. But 
they actually did not leave healed. It was as they were going that they were healed. Right. Yeah. How often do we leave, let's say, even worship, and something's been bothering us, and all of a sudden we say, it's gone. And we don't give God credit for what? His word, his body and right. blood, and that forgiveness of sins, or whatever it is that happened on that Sunday, making a difference. You know, and it's just like I've said, and I think you heard me say this early, sometimes I think I've done the worst sermon, and somebody walks out and said, boy, I needed that sermon this morning. Right. And sometimes I do a good sermon, and... Or you think it's good. Or I think it's good. <laughs> you hear nothing but crickets. And you get nothing but... Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Where were you this morning? I mean, it's strange how God works in and through True. us. Yeah. And not just the minister, but every one of us. Well, and it's sometimes you 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 hear the words, but you don't hear it, you don't understand, or it, you don't wake up <laughs> enough later in the week when you're not at church, and you can't tell, and you don't tell people, don't tell you then that what you said made a difference. So you don't know when what you have said or done affects somebody along the way. And it could and even be years. Oh, yes. I've had yes. people come up and say, Pastor, you know that one sermon you did? Uh -huh. And they, I still remember. And, and they thinking, still remember? Yeah, what sermon was it? I mean, it's that kind of a feeling. <laughs> I did mean, I do that? I mean, you know, I've done in almost 50 years, well, I haven't been 50 years preaching. Mm -hmm. And that means there's a lot of sermons. You know, I don't know everything. No. I don't remember everything. I know the gist, I know the story. But what it was I said that day that made a difference, I haven't the foggiest idea. Great example. I remember when I was a kid going to, to uh, confirmation classes, and oh, the senior wow. pastor was in, the, the Pastor Tollison, and uh, he came in and was, was giving the, the lesson or whatever. And one of the, he kind of started out by asking us, and there must have been a dozen of us in the class, asking us, um, it, would your life be complete and would, you, would God be happy you, if you make sure if you lived your life by the Ten Commandments? So the Ten Commandments, do they, uh, uh, is that what you need to live by, the Ten Commandments? And we went around the room, he kind of put us on the spot. Is the Ten Commandments kind of the end all be all of it? And we all just kind of said, I remember us kind of saying yes. And by the time it came to me, I was, yes. And we all said yes. <laughs> to this day, you know, you know there's, there's hundreds of things specific things that are said throughout the Old and New Testament that don't specifically relate to the Ten Commandments. So my point is, is that, you know, is, uh, you know, here's something that was said by a pastor uh, years and decades ago. But, but today I'm, I'm telling you, you know, so you never know you when somebody, when you say something, that, that something yeah. really sticks. Right. right. And because of that, Again, it's that ordinary that becomes the means by which God comes to us and oh, yeah. reminds us yeah. of what's going on. Not necessarily some lightning flash, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, oh, and yet, that's just kind of seeps what that in means. And kind of, I've been hearing yeah. it all this time. <laughs> and yet God commanded them to follow the law, which right. they did. Yeah, the law is important, you pour, and it's part of it. Yeah, you pour but, water on the top of your plant, it takes a while for that water to get through all the dirt <laughs> before that plant can really True. absorb it. it. You know? <laughs> Sometimes there's a lot of life, a lot of dirt, a lot of things to get in the way before that finally soaks in to the point okay. where you can use it. So why do you think then Jesus uses the Samaritan, who would really be a foreigner, Yes. Which would be outside that circle. What is it that commends him above the other nine? 
the, the, the leper yeah. that returned, the Samaritan leper. What commends him above everything else for God to say this? His, his direct worship, his personal worship uh, and thankfulness. What he does. Uh, action. This action. On it. We never know, do we? No. And yet... And specifically, I mean, it, and again, you had mentioned this before, Jesus doesn't say that this one that came back is any better than the other nine. That's correct. Or, or the correct. fact that this one didn't follow, he said, go, but he came back, so he did something wrong, so he's less good than the other nine. Well, there's he no came differentiation. Back. You know, we really don't know whether... Right, there's nothing... That wasn't part of the lesson. after he had been to the to the priest or not but he wasn't maybe he wasn't technically mm -hmm. you know his knowledge of the law wasn't like the Jews because he was a Samaritan yeah so they he had, didn't think it was still kind of a Jewish religion there was yeah it's it was kind of like Islam own, where, where you know right, there's the Shias and the, and the Sunnis and the, brand it's where they where they in the worship. Yeah. You know. But why would then one who is not a Jew listen to a Jewish rabbi? Well, the Samaritans were Jews. They were just, they, they've, they said the temple was at Mount Shechem as opposed to Jerusalem. So the, so it was kind of like, you know, it's not unlike, uh, like I said, Jewish. So they, they did follow most Jewish law, they, you know. So we know then what about the individual? That he knew, that he knew, uh, he was familiar yeah. with the Old Testament, I guess you could just say. And it is that knowledge which provided him with the knowledge of saying, or he could have said, because he didn't immediately just stay with Jesus, he actually left with them mm -hmm. to go to, to, the, to, to show the, the priest. To show the priest. So he had that, and for Jesus then to say, your faith has made you well. well. But whether that was totally, it wasn't maybe totally the physical healing, that had already happened. But now, his faith makes him spiritually well. Right. As what, you know. And I think the other nine, their faith is what cleansed them as well. Well, it, yeah, up to a point. Completely. Then, no, I think yeah. completely. Yeah. There was nothing else healed them but their faith in God. Right, and the Greek word here that was used is zizokin, which comes from zoso, which is the idea of being healed. Being healed. And that's what we need to remember here. It is he was healed, but Jesus says your faith is what really, really made, made the, difference. the difference. And there are people who I've seen and known in my ministry who were given very little chance and have made it through. Sure. I've also seen some that really should have made it through but didn't. Yeah. And there's no explanation other than they didn't trust. What is it that we as followers of Jesus need to do going through this COVID time? Trust and have faith. Trust, yeah. Does that mean we go out and party and do the, all no. of that? Or what does it mean? Well, there, we always have there a choice. are laws and rules that we're supposed to follow, and you do that, and and also have faith that you're going, you know. And, it's and we all have a choice. He loves over. us enough to give us. Doesn't a choice. Doesn't mean you're not going to get it. Well, you know, and, and there are some who absolutely don't believe also can be healed from the same medicine. 
Well, and, and I think sometimes well, too what yeah. we forget is is that um, through Christ, he, what did he do? He conquered death, right? So if we do pass from something like when we pass, and when if it were Corona or a car accident, it's gonna be something. If you have that faith, when that temporal death comes through Christ and your faith in Christ, He conquered death. Right. You won't die. I mean, in, in your corporal your, body, in yeah. the world that we know it. Right. You know. Uh, yes, and you're, the people who will weep are the people who are left here. Yeah. But the person who has passed, in their faith, they will be made live. Yeah. So it doesn't always mean that, you know, it, it would be wrong, and I think inappropriate to think that if you have enough faith, you won't die from an illness. Oh. I don't think that's what it's about. No. I don't think if you have enough faith, you won't die in a car accident. Oh, you no. died in a car accident? Oh, no, you must not have had enough that's faith. That's not. That's, but that's how some people, that's how many that's people how think many about that. That's how many people yeah. take it and not listen. But, but, but that's the part of thing. temporal life in this world that we know. But what Christ has done, uh, God has done, is conquered that. And so that when we do pass, when we pass and we have the faith of these lepers, of this tenth leper, in this temporal life, that the promise is that yes, we, we will we will have life, and we will have life as we, you know, as we pretty much know it. I mean, different in, of course. But ways. that is part of the idea of seeing. Yeah. As we see and believe, it gives us a different feeling as we approach and go right. out. So we and don't have to live our life in fear. We don't have to live our life in, 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 in fear. Right. And the Samaritan saw in Jesus the miracles that he had been doing, oh, yeah. and he let it sink in. How many people today see something but won't let it permeate their um, crusty behavior, <laughs> let's put it that way? Yeah. And, and it's not just health-wise, I mean, it's in a multitude of things, right? Right. <laughs> and, and that is probably one of the things I see here that we need to take from this, that we need to see, not just hear, but we need to see it. see it. And in seeing, we believe and move forward. And we are then able to tell others as to what is going on in our life, but in the life of Christians. Right. And the witnessing, which is what I say with the other nine, you know, which is kind of the, you know, kind of quietly stated things that's happening here is go tell the priest. What does the priest have to do with them being healed? Nothing. 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 No. But go tell the priest. Why? It's a witnessing. That's what we're to do is, is go, you know, witness that. Right. And as I see different things within, I can then say I have, because I've seen something, but then hearing it and then letting it sink in, it can make a difference. And it is like with, you know, um, back in my days of, of um, teenagehood, when polio was so great, you saw some very, very nasty things. And then you have someone who went through it you see him, and he's a classmate, a roommate of yours in college. Mm. And so here you go, and you all of a sudden see, and it helps you then to what? Right. Believe, Believe and trust. Mm. And how often do people not see, believe, and trust? And many people want to, need to see it for themselves. That's, that's sometimes even more difficult. That I've never seen that happen. They have to. Be other, they have other to people. really see. Because, <coughs> you know, when you see, you have several witnesses to a car accident, you have that many stories of what happened. Different stories. Different things. People don't see the same things. Yeah. 
We all see things oh, differently. We do. And on Sunday morning, <laughs> my wife sees things differently with Absolutely. maybe my robe or my <laughs> stole. She has, There's a different she's detail that she's focused different on. Things. Yeah. We all have she's, our own details. That we're and she sees <laughs> what's wrong with the flowers. You are, yeah, you have sure. a thing on your, yeah. on your belt or your, 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 yeah. your, your <laughs> So, but, but that's part of that's, life, isn't it? That's that we what all, she's aware of all the time. She takes care of those things. Right. And what should that tell us <laughs> about going out in seeing God's hand in mm -hmm. the healing graces? Heart. We need to tell people that, don't we? And, um... So, let me ask this. Do we see God as a stern judge or a loving parent? I see him more as a loving parent. And there's different views of a loving parent. Well, but some are good and some be, are bad. There has to be, <laughs> and there's you know, in between. my vision is uh, a loving parent, but who's fairly stern with... Which is part of being what? a loving parent. Th and it is. It he really tells us is. that too. It's it's not... like that a good, a good parent, a yeah. loving parent. It's if you watching. love your child, you'll, you know, you... they may pat him on the bottom for running out into the street, you know, or something well, like that. You that's know? true. You let, yes, you know, they somehow have they to. need to understand that, that that's going to kill you. You know, my, my, I have a friend yeah, of mine, his little boy. You. He would always tell his little boy what, you know, whatever. He said, you know what that'll do, little boy. He'd always say that. You know, you know what that'll do. But as this kid got a little older, he would ask his dad. He got to the point. Where, what would that do to a boy? <laughs> you know, and, and well, that's, that's you, yeah. You've got to. You so. to so. Then, do we see our relationship to God as a failure, or as a beloved child? I see mine as a constant failure. <laughs> you know, I see my life when I look at myself, judging myself in my relationship to God. I, I, I get up every morning wondering. Why the heck does he bother with me, <laughs> you know? Knowing what I think on a moment to moment, things that I say, the way I feel about certain things, the way things that I do and don't do on almost a minute by minute basis, I wonder sometimes why he even would waste his time with someone like that. Why, you know, which why is why... You, why I, do you waste your time on your son? Huh? Exactly right. I mean, that's so exactly you always, right. So you know... Um, I can't, I couldn't, there's not enough paper to figure out list of things I've done to uh, to let God down, my father down. I can't, there's not enough paper in the world to tell it, to list well, the things that I've done that true. grieves him, you know. But <laughs> yet, what does he do But he's forgiven you everything that you've ever done. If I know he's there and I know that he loves me, you, you forgive and me. And he knows you know? that, yeah. And, uh, so he is a, he, he loves his child. He does. And yet, why do we hold on to that idea of being a failure? Why can't we just go out and celebrate that God loves us and accepts us as we have been? Yeah. How about, how about looking at someone like Joe Biden and then look at his son that everybody talks about, that one son that's always getting in trouble. How difficult would it be, and I'm not saying Joe Biden's perfect or anything, but try having a father who's perfect in every way and trying to live up to that standard is. and what is that what can that do to a person you can look at that standard and then you look at yourself and you can and it's easy to start getting down on yourself it's easy to hate yourself it's easy to feel terrible but jesus relieves us of that because he forgives us he, he does, knows but he we, knows it, us. but if we don't so take I, it you, we have to through through this we grace. understand through the word and through help of each other, we recognize, we forgive. You know, that forgiveness is such a powerful thing when we know we can't live up to those expectations. You, have to you can't live you. without forgiveness and understanding. Otherwise, it would just be the darkest hole you could live in. That's something that's so powerful. And for folks who are so separated from God and, and have done things in their lives or, or have come from a background and lived a life that nothing good ever happens and everything's terrible and everybody tells this person that they're terrible everybody tells them you're a Samaritan and you're a leper and you're the horrible <laughs> get away from me you've got nothing to do with life for for someone for Jesus for God to say that you are no less valuable than the priest that I'm sending you to 
but if we see either failure or beloved child, this will help us answer this next question. Do we see fearful uncertainty or an open future, open horizon, open possibilities? Because how we answer that question right. will determine how we see it as either, oh, um, we're going to have Despair. to do this, yeah. or, gee, thank you, God. Yeah. Right. And, and again, I think that tenth leper is the one who saw, saw, see, yes. keep that in mind, that what the future was going to be. Right. right. So he saw beyond, whereas the other ten maybe only felt, okay, we've done our obligation and we don't have to apply it and now see it and carry I it I expect forward. this kind of treatment from God. <laughs> this is something right. That, this is why I worship him. So I mean, <laughs> it, it's a, this is one of those that depending on what you say or see, Oh, yeah. It depends on how the outcome is going to be. Mm -hmm. And it does say that what? Not everybody is going to be, and I looked up in my uh, thesaurus just to make sure that we are grateful. And there were different words, thankful, appreciative, right. obliged, indebted, glad, gratifying, well, welcoming, yeah. satisfying, <laughs> pleasing, pleasant, refreshing, comforting right are all of those things that he felt whereas I wonder what the other nine felt mm -hmm. when we have something good happen to us do we have those kinds of feelings but we may not we may have that but we don't say thank you which is the end action for all of this is that you have to declare your gratefulness. You know, when, you, when, you, when a, a parent is with a little so, child and somebody gives that little child a gift or something like this, what does the parent say to that little kid? They'll whisper in his ear, say thank you. Yeah, say thank you. <laughs> where does that come from? Where, you have where to does that teach come from? That. Why, yeah, why, yeah. Where, why is that right to us? What, where, right. where did that come from? Yeah. You know, and, and I think that that comes from, God gives us, puts that in our heart. You know, not just to give him thanks, but clearly, you know, but also to say that to each other. When you know? I was studying this, there's a less, there was a lesson on the internet uh, for kids, not just, not for adults, but they used this story for a Sunday school lesson. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole point of it, is to be grateful, mm -hmm. to, to be thankful for what you have or what you get or something, you know, or what God's given us. And th all so, throughout the Old Testament as well, yeah, there's so many, thanks, thank God, you know, so many of the prophets but and, and that people was, that, that and they that, would say that, thanks to God or thank the and Lord. And that was the lesson here mm -hmm. for, that was in another uh, post that I got. But this also leads us to this month, which is Stewardship Month. Oh yeah. Which, which helps us to um, then also think about giving yeah. and yeah. seeing all that we have been given, what do we do with that? Do we say, I'm going to hoard it for myself and no. I'm, I'm not <laughs> Some gonna people anybody. Do. <laughs> right. Or are we going to freely give and also time? It's not just yeah. money, oh. but our time also, you know, I'm Jesus didn't give these people money. But he gave him his time. He said he stopped in his important travel. He held up all the people that were following him to Jerusalem. And he gave, that was time that he gave. You know, this is an example. And that's what we, some of us have more time than money, <laughs> right? You know, and, and what is more valuable? I believe time. Well, time. Time is more valuable. I would rather be able to have somebody give me time than the money because I can do more with You need the time. Yes. And 
the thing is, we have all of these modern conveniences that are supposed to save us time, and what happens? We find we have less, we have time. less time. But getting back and trying to tie all of these things together, to return to give thanks in order that we might see the lasting effects and in seeing to go and share with others that they right. may see. It doesn't mean that we have to convert them to coming to this church or any church, but that they see God's hand in our lives. Right. And how many of us have at least one story? Most of us have probably hundreds of stories where God has been active within their life in some way. Parents, siblings, family, whatever, that we could say, see, here's an example. Don't you have some examples too where God has intersected with you and your family and made a difference? And that's sometimes what needs to happen in order to be able to win them for Christ because they haven't taken the time to stop, to see, to reflect, to give thanks for what they have. Um, what I hear sometimes, well, they're just lucky. Oh yeah, that's a good they're, way to they're, say They're that. just lucky. Yeah. No, they've been blessed. Right. And God has been with them, and so we need to do that. And yet we need to then take it and share it with others. Um, and you know, it's not just even, you had mentioned this too, and I, I, in my mind, this, is, this seems so important. Um, you, to be thankful for what we have, and thankful for what we've been blessed with. But also, just like this, this, this tenth one who turned around, and you mentioned that, because he can see, he knows what life would be like without what he's been given. Yes. Right. And so to be thankful, to be aware, to be cognizant of what life would be without our community, without the people around. What would life be like without the blessings that he has? Not just that, oh, this is great because I have it, but be very aware of what life would be like, how, dis how despairing your life could, would be uh, without it. Right. But he saw, he returned, mm -hmm. He gave thanks, and he was affirmed in his life. How he went about after that, we don't know anything about him. That's where I'd like to be able to say, what happened to him? What, what did he do with his life? And there's no stories of that. You know, it, I guess, well, some of these are just, we need to know that important thing that happened in his life. Uh, and though that's the story we're told what happened to him after that is not the important thing You're right but i'm curious well, curious i'm always then curious you have to make up the story you, <laughs> you know, know you know how you read and it's supposed to be an open end thing so you can yeah. make up your own ending right. well we got lots well, of those you know, and i'm always curious in what the parable goes. parables that are in here how many times and there's one that always stands out is the woman at the well you know, how many times do you hear Christ, day, Christ right? say this at the very go? end? Go and sin no more. How many times is he says of sin? And wow, what kind of pressure is that? How would you like Jesus Christ to be standing in front of me and say, you. Go and sin no well, more? He, I could bet you within an hour I could count that. on one. I say it every week. Yeah, you well, know. And, <laughs> He said, Go and sin no more. And that's the, yeah, that's yeah. really what he said. I just think us. That, that's the end of the parable right there. And here's a great example of like... It's not the end of her what? life, but it's the end of <laughs> that you, story. Did so she go and get. never... If so if she sinned, so now well, she went against God? Well, I go against God, unfortunately, all the or time. Or does she yeah. go and confess and receive forgiveness and the sin is washed away? Each time, it every is. time. Seven and seven again, seven and seven. Because we have to always do that. We have. Well, we can't just, you know, we can't just we're be... we're told not to repeat yeah. Yeah. what we know we've done wrong yeah so it's like you it's not that i'm cleansed from being a leper and now i'll never be a leper anymore you know 
Right. Or sin is different. <laughs> sin is a different disease. <laughs> was what? I mean, apparently living with countless guys. Right. So don't do it anymore. Yeah, right. If you're, you know, you find one to live with or you don't. Yeah. And just don't do that one again. Or if you had robbed been a robber don't do that anymore you have to you have to change your life yeah there's a choice it's a you can't it's change impossible. your life you in some way you can't stay there without you, know, you can't do that on no. your own so you need help. It's, but as the leper is healed that's not all that's happened because he's no. been made whole he's been restored He's drawn back into that relationship with God, and that relationship is where he hears, my son, go and sin no more. You have been healed. Go and sin no more. Go and try to live the best life you can. Right. And there's still going to be things that we do that are wrong. Um, oh, well. But. Well. God is saying, because you are in relationship with me, you now have a method. And if he could have said it any clearer, he says it when he goes to Jerusalem and hangs on the cross. Right. Today you will be with me in paradise. Right. We know that. And even though we know it, it's hard to sometimes get people to believe or accept that. Oh, yeah. Because well, they, how long, in effect, how long did it take me to figure that out, to really feel that? Yeah, like so, Bonhoeffer said. You know, it, what is it, 50 years, 60 years? And I might believe that until today. You what really, about tomorrow? truly feel that he's telling you that. Yeah, the peace which passes yeah, all understanding that's it. does not come when we were a teenager or even a 20 or a 30 no. year old most often no. because we have too many temptations out there and we haven't learned we to We just deal haven't with them. learned about life and <laughs> how, pick to, up your cross every how day. to get there. It's, it's pick up your cross every day. But the key is what the Samaritan did or the leper did. Samaritan it's leper. Samaritan, yeah. Was he returned. Right. And that's the key. I think. And if we Christ. return, we have salvation. Right. End of story. It is the end. Uh -huh. So. St. <laughs> Mark's Lutheran Pastor Bessert. <laughs> it's a busy phone today. Speaking. He'll edit it. We'll, we'll, we'll edit this and put an ending on it. Yes, yes. <laughs> nope, because we'll be calling you again here in a few months to pack all that stuff up again and move it to Wisconsin. And, um, right. Lesson. Okay, thank you. This lesson pointed out. Uh, at the beginning, it says, how did it read? Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. I like to pick these little things out of here. <laughs> you know, you read, you read the, all, all the Bible stories and you read. And but didn't he I know? always like to figure out where is this is happening, okay? So the border between Samaria and Galilee. Numerous scholars have pointed to the geographical difficulty in the description of this going through that region since, since no such geographical region exists. But, he says, the geographical reference, whatever its difficulties, alerts the reader to the 
evangelist theological concern to move Jesus to the city of destiny where salvation is to be definitely achieved for human beings. Right. In other words, Jesus was not interested in the topography no. of the area, but the message but of happens? salvation with someone seen and returning to give thanks. Right. And he uses, you know, the Samaritan in the other, we other another parable that we talked about, the Good Samaritan thing. Yes. So, uh, have this foreigner to the Jews, in other words, getting his sins forgiven, getting his physical uh, troubles healed, which really, you know, the Jews thought, well, there's nothing, you know, don't even deal with these people. So that's um, just shows you that that message is for everybody no matter right. what color what anything whatever difference we think there is the message is for for us all and that was what they pointed out in this lesson about that and can we see it we don't always I would love if people could see that because that would save a lot of peace in the world. Oh, absolutely. And especially in the Midwest or the Mid uh, East, um, where that is such a oh, yeah. constant battle, fight. So. Yep. Well, it is here too. So. Uh, Maybe, you know, for one reason or another, or one, or for one issue or another, uh, you know. I mean, I remember when a certain color couldn't go to the school with the other color. That was, that was a big change. What we will do is we will conclude our Bible studies for this year. If you have an interest in a particular parable or study that you would like, please give us a call or send us a note letting us know what you would like us to be studying. And we will pick that up after the first of the year. Thank you and Merry Christmas.